Chair, you are live. Good afternoon and welcome to the November 2022 meeting of the Public Art and Cultural Commission. I'm Chair Katie Cornell. The Public Art and Cultural Commission, originally called the Public Art Board, was established in 2000. The nine member commission uh, serves as an advisory board to the city on matters concerning art in public spaces. The commission is responsible for promoting public art in the city, overseeing the public spaces in the city of Asheville, our public art in public spaces in the city of Asheville are properly maintained, and educating the community about public art. All community members and staff are participating virtually. We're streaming on a on our live virtual engagement hub, which is accessible through the virtual engagement hub link on the front page of the city website and on the city's YouTube page. To participate by phone, dial 855-925-2801, meeting code 9182. You can send public comments to Public Art and Cultural Commission at publicinput.com. I will now do a roll call vote of our members. Committee members, as I call your name, please say a quick hi. Uh, Andrew Fletcher, I do not see. Marsha Almodovar is not here. Joanna Haggerty. Hello. Pat Kappas. Hello. Allie McGee. Hi. Pete Perez. Hello. Reggie Tidwell could not be with us today, and I do not see Shirley Whiteside. So we will move on. Um, so first order of business will go a little bit out of order under administrative items. I would like to welcome our newest Public Art and Cultural Commission member, Pat Kappas. Yay! Pat was officially appointed to the commission uh, at Tuesday's city council meeting. Pat, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think I know everyone here and um, nice to see some faces. Johanna, I haven't seen you in ages, but uh, anyways, I'm really excited to be part of the group and, and uh, contribute any way I can. So thank you. Awesome. We're happy to have you. So um, the other administrative item is the October minutes. Did everybody have a chance to review those? Do they look okay? Any edits? They look okay. Can I get a motion to approve? I'll move. Pete has moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. And I guess I have to do a roll, roll call vote. <laughs> Everybody to approve the minutes. Okay. We're going to do this again. Just say whether you approve or you do not approve when I call your name. We're skipping Andrew and Marsha. Joanna. Approve. Or Pat Cabas. Approve. Oh, Andrew, you're here. Welcome. We're just approving the October board minutes. Did you have a chance to review those minutes? Um, no, I have not. So don't. Okay, I will. I'll call. I will come back to you if you want to look at them quickly. Thank you. Ali McGee, approve. Yes. Pete Perez, approve. And I approve. You had a chance to pull them up, Andrew. Sorry, guys. I just got off the road coming to the house, so I'm okay. I'm, I'm, a I'm a little bit behind. With my apologies. I'm happy to vote in approval, though. Um, Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so we talk, I, tr I trust y'all's judgment. Thank you. We have the minutes passed, so we're going to move on to updates now. Um, and we are starting our with our last meeting, we're gonna do this a little differently where we want to be sure that we have updates from all of our members first. And so we'll go around and each of you, if you wanna share what you're doing right now, um, any kind of arts um, or public art related updates, events that you wanna share with the group. 
Allie, you're first on my screen, so I'm going to pick on you first. There's my mute button. Um, so public arts or arts related, right? It's okay. So I have two arts related. One is that I am teaching a creative writing course through Great Smokies Writing Program, and all of the spring courses are up now for um, the spring semester. And there's five, 10, and 15 week courses. There's some really amazing offerings. I think Great Smokies Writing Program is such a such a wonderful program and also so affordable for North Carolina residents, especially. So there's a lot of great classes and mine is on um, character development using the Enneagram. And you could even take my class and Allie Marshall's class. You could take all the alleys. She's doing a social media for creatives class. And there's some other really good ones too. Um, the second one is that I, um, I recently joined the board of Story Parlor, which is out in West Asheville and is a really cool, um, event space that's very kind of heavily story, spoken word, narrative centric, but other things go on there as well. Um, and there, I think there's a real opportunity to uh, put together some programming around like public art and story or something like that there. Um, so I just wanted to, that's a very vague general statement at this point, but I just want to sort of put out there that there might be um, because they do these story mixers while they bring people together from different groups like they're doing a festival review night and just bringing people who run arts festivals in to talk about the festivals and um, so there might be a cool opportunity to go there and um, talk about what we do or public art or something so they have a great calendar that's awesome Allie yeah Pete uh, not an update as much as a shout out to Stephanie if she's still on we had our um, arts council state-of-the-arts brunch and the mayor had an emergency and was not able to make it. And Stephanie stepped in at the last minute and got up in front of, in front of a bunch of whole bunch of people and did a great job. So thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you, you did awesome. You did really great. Great thank you very much. <laughs> Pat, do you have any updates you'd like to share? Um, not so much. Um, you know, first meeting, tuning in. I will say uh, this morning I was able to to attend uh, the YMI's groundbreaking ceremony, which is really exciting. So, uh, uh, you know, something to watch um, over the next few months uh, to see, you know, how they get positioned to open up to the public. So it's pretty exciting. <laughs> when When is their projected reopening, Pat? Do you know? I believe it's like probably early summer. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Joanna? Oh man, sometimes it's hard to know what to highlight. Um, I think maybe I'll sort of talk a little bit about my business, Art Hero, and where we are at the moment. Um, uh, speaking of Allie Marshall, she has kind of come on board to help us grow our content. So we're kind of making sure a lot more conversations about arts and economics are coming out. I think we did a two-part um, blog on the Moorhead Scholar um, report that came out. So yeah, just trying to kind of, again, blend arts and creativity and fun with some of the economic conversations. So if anybody has any thoughts on what we should be talking about or how to kind of get those stories out. And then I also had Carly on my radio show with Biz Radio US. So that was really fun. And we got to talk about the Art and the Heart Project. So yeah, just trying to kind of really focus on grounding in Asheville, but then connecting with other communities. There's this new magazine in Memphis, Tennessee called Artist Feature Mag, and they're telling really beautiful stories about artists and creatives. And so it's just, yeah, kind of connecting by staying local, but then like bringing all these other pings and conversations of arts here. So, yeah. That's awesome. Andrew? Well, um, as some of you may be aware, I just got the next four years of my life back. And so I'm sort of in a <laughs> transitional period right now uh, where I don't have any projects that are really going on and I'm looking for them right now. So that's, you know, of course, in the cycles of things, that's just sort of an interesting one. Um, and I'm excited to sort of uh, get back to looking at those uh, other horizons right now. So I'm so I'm actually all ears about uh, opportunities today rather than sharing um, uh, sharing something that I'm in progress of. Good. There's plenty of opportunities. <laughs> Deb's going to share quite a few of them <laughs> right now. I mean, right after we get through this. Um, so I am, just so you guys know, serving on the selection panel for the county's equity murals um, that they're doing. Um, so I'll keep you updated as that uh, process moves forward. It's 
artists. Um, if you didn't see the call for artists, they are doing a series of murals on county buildings. And so um, very pleased to see the county moving in this direction. Um, and I think they're sticking their toes in the water to um, see about creating their own kind of public art program. Um, so I'll, I'm definitely uh, gonna keep my eyes on that uh, and I'll be sure to share what I find out. Quick question, Katie, um, where did the call go out to? Is it like a newsletter? Cause I don't think I saw it specifically come through any of my. The city, um, I mean, the county put it out through all of their channels. They actually did a lot of promotion around it. They created a video and everything and the arts council has been pushing it through all our channels as well. Um, so is so there, was, this, the, this, the county has a specific newsletter that some of those things, I just, maybe I'm not on some of those things. So if y'all can recommend or forward me one so I can make sure I'm on it, I think I'm missing some of the calls and I'd love to stay up to date with those. So just help me perfect. figure out what I'm missing. <laughs> It would be great. Well, I don't know, Steph, if that's even a possibility to put calls um, for public art projects on the page that are not specifically city related. Like if there's a call from the county, could that be posted on the public art page? Mm -hmm. And we help share some of that stuff out for other folks, but we usually sh share it with you and have you share it out actually. But I have no problem with doing that. Um, I just don't think that the city's public art page, just being honest, is a place that a lot of people are looking. Um, so. And if I knew how frequent to check it, I would happily do that too. Right. So again, just let me know how I can stay more up to date and I will happily just keep my eyes more peeled. So whether it's a newsletter or ch checking y'all social accounts more, whatever is fine. Also, I think it's okay for us to put stuff like that on it, literally at the bottom of the agenda of this meeting and anybody can add it perhaps, right? So when you can hear something, uh, a regional opportunity or something that a, an Asheville artist might be interested in. So should we do like an email call to the um, members like a week in advance of the meeting to get those things to add to the agenda? Mm -hmm. I think that sounds great. Um, the other thing that I want to bring to the committee's attention, um, and I probably should have added it to the agenda, sorry, Steph, um, is that there is some conversations happening right now about the city's um, strategic event partnership program. What that's going to look like, um, I don't know yet. There was a proposal that was going to be brought forward in November, and now it'll likely be January, um, but it's something to keep our eyes peeled on um, because uh, that is art in public space, outdoor festivals and events. So um, definitely want us to uh, keep on top of that discussion as it advances as well. Okay, so next on our agenda is the Pack Square Plaza Visioning and Art in the Heart update. Carly is going to bring up just a couple of visual aids for us to to discuss. I wonder, Carly, do you want to start with Art in the Heart and those updates, and sure. then we could then we can talk about the Pack Square community engagement and wrap with our request for your big brains. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let me. Okay, just a few quick updates on Art in the Heart. The last time that we all spoke, um, our careful tending had either, I think it had just happened, and I tried to share a video clip with you all, but the sound didn't work. So I hope you all went to the website and checked those videos out because they are on there in all of their glory um, and really fun to sift through. Um, since we met last time, Homesick is the sculpture that took the place of Room in the Sky, Jackson Martin sculpture. And the podium was built. <laughs> it was at like 7 p.m. I think the night before it was uh, due to be installed, but we pulled it off and we're th very thankful to Harper and LS3P who helped design and construct this podium for the artwork. So that there was a lot of work that went into that. We're very appreciative and it looks great. I don't know if you all had a chance to go out and take a look. Um, this was on November 5th. I went out 
and there was quite a crowd gathered around. They had a projection on the front of the podium and everybody was using that little art bench area there to kind of sit and watch the projections and listen to the audio clip interviews. Um, they did tons of interviews. I think it was a 30 to 40 minute loop of interviews actually of people talking about their experiences looking for housing, living in Asheville, you know, comparing how it used to be to how it is now. We talked to real estate agents, homeless individuals. It was, you know, all over the board. Um, so really spectacular. And if you get a chance on a Saturday evening, they are doing projections from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. And there will be two more of those sessions. So this upcoming Saturday and then the um, final Saturday in, in November. So the next installation that's going to come up is Larry Paul King. And I actually met with the artist, with Larry and his wife, Sue, out on site yesterday. We were putting posts in the ground and measuring for um, where this natural sculpture is going to go. And it's gonna be located in location one, which is adjacent to the Biltmore Company building. So that little raised grassy area there. And they have been gathering this campus uh, I think for the past several weeks and going through a really tedious process of um, basically stripping um, the husk off of this grass and putting it through a steamer to straighten it and then arranging it into bundles that they're going to then wrap with these colorful bands. And so they're going to set those up in a really um, beautiful and unique way in that space. And of course, we'll have some interpretive artist placards and stuff out there to describe his vision um, for this particular sculpture. But it's been really fun working with these two artists and I'm really excited to see it out on site. And they wanted to make sure that I noted the best time to come out and see the sculpture is gonna be when the sun is out. Um, and particularly if you're in the plaza, I guess after you know 4 or 4.30 PM, the sun is behind the building. So it's not really shining on this spot. So they said before 3.30 on a sunny day, come check it out because these really glow, the grasses really grow, glow in the sunlight. And so these are some of the process photos. They've been sending me updates um, throughout showing all the work that they've been putting into this. So the installation will happen on November 21st and then it's gonna be up to be determined. Um, the artist really wanted to let this natural sculpture sort of do its thing in the public realm and let, um, you know, weather and the public and whatever other forces at play sort of determine when it comes down. So when it's, you know, naturally time for it to come down, the artist will determine that. And then another piece of art that will go up in November or project that will happen in November is the Vance Tangram Obelisk. So it's going to be November 26th and 27th. So Saturday and Sunday from 1.30 to 4.30 p.m. And this is one of our only interactive activities um, that was submitted and accepted. And so there's going to be a giant, I believe it's like a 12 foot by 4 foot obelisk, but it's going to be flat and cut into all these geometric shapes, very colorful colors. So when all put together in their original form, it'll look or be reminiscent of the Vance Monument. But the idea is to get people to come in and rearrange the shapes to make, um, to reinterpret what that, those pieces could, could become. And he'll also have a paper activity that'll be out on site. So a table set up with some scissors and glue. And so this is an example of one of those activity sheets. So the idea is to cut apart um, the pieces and you just have a miniature paper version of the larger activity happening in the plaza. He also did, um, a very cool, Edwin Salas Castala, he did a very cool video, like stop action video that we're gonna use as a promotion tool on Instagram. And I'm hoping to be able to put it on the website at some point as well. And just a quick note, next Tuesday, November 22nd from 3.30 to five, we're going to have a a media day. So we're inviting the media to come out and all three artists are gonna be available. I'll be out there as well. Um, for press to come out and ask us questions. And as always, there's the Art in the Heart info, so the webpage, ashevillenc.gov slash art in the heart. And then if you go to publicinput.com slash pack square, that's where you can um, look at the different engagements and survey options. And then I guess I'll go back up to the top stuff so you can talk about 
pack square visioning. Thanks, Carly. So, um, and those things are so cool. Y'all go out and see them. Uh, I'm really excited about uh, Larry Paul King's work too. So we wanted to uh, share with you that we have released all of the this phase of the PAC Square Visioning Project's public engagement dates, times, and locations. And there's a lot going on December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And so we're hoping that you are going to attend much of this as um, you can. We have focus groups happening on the 1st and 2nd. On the 1st, we are going to be in the Lord Auditorium of the PAC Memorial Library. And on the 2nd, we're going to be in Asheville's Municipal Building, which is better known as the Fire Station downtown. And uh, we have a variety of themes that we're gonna be addressing. So for each one of these meetings, there'll be a short presentation that happens at the, the front end that just kind of level sets and provides context and helps people understand what we're looking for. And then there will be, depending on the number of attendees, um, you know, either breakout groups or a round table where we have um, discussions based on three to five questions that we're looking spe for specific answers on. So for just note that while there'll be some boards at each one of these, th none of these, including the planning and design session are actually the design charrette. If you see on the far like right bottom corner there, the design workshop is actually happening in January. That's Friday, January 13th. And that is going to be the fun, what are we doing with the physical elements in this space and how do they support every other thing we're trying to do moment. Just to kind of sidebar and say, well, what happens with all of this engagement? Just as a reminder, we're trying to get a document delivered to the community, a draft document, perhaps in March, so that we can go to city council and county commission by the end of April with all of these recommendations. So in addition to these very specific themes that we're gonna be looking at, we have some other more general opportunities for public engagement as well. So Friday night, we are supporting the first Fridays that is happening now on the block. It's a collaboration with the Noir Collective. We are doing a pop-up pop up at Penny Cup. So they're gonna be staying open late with us. We're gonna have you know free coffee, tea, cider, some cookies and all of that stuff. And people could just come in and um, chat about different topics. This is more of a general session meet the consultants and just kind of say, hey, I wanted to come in and just learn something specific. It's a more casual um, event, but it, we also encourage you to go next door to the Noir Collective. They're going to be um, hosting folks doing spoken word. And then they also just have, um, you know, strategic and dedicated, really conscientious talk time with artists and people who love art, you know, especially about like the future of the block and what is black art, really important topics for our community. And then at seven o'clock, um, Micah Mack or Micah McKenzie, as many of you might have met or known him before, he's having an art opening at the Foundry. So the whole thing kind of ends with people going over to the Foundry Hotel and um, enjoying and um, enjoying that art opening. So that's happening Friday. Um, the, but I think these things are really great and that is gonna be very fun. But I think the most potentially unique thing that we're doing is happening on Saturday and that's the open house and site tour. And so we're really excited because uh, Pozana Restaurant is hosting us and acting as the hub. And we are going to be receiving people um, starting at 10 a.m. into Pozana's. Again, we're going to have some a presentation that helps people understand the project and um, and what we're looking for. There's going to be um, all kinds of refreshments available there. And then we're sending people out on tour groups around the block. And there's going to be four or five stations set up where you're going to learn about the history or around the pack square. I'm sorry. You're going to learn about the, the history of this area. You're going to look at some of the kind of biggest challenges we have um, in the area, talk about partnerships and, um, you know, other potential in the area. And we're also going to have live entertainment and um, interactivity, interactive activities for that are kind of family friendly out there. So it should be um, a really 
a really great time. And in the end, we're going to also having people in the outdoor dining area of Posanas that after the tour is over, people will go there and they will kind of submit their their answers to some specific questions right at that station. It's also a station where people who don't have the time to go through the whole one hour experience will be able to do like a quick hit and then they'll be able to provide any kind of comments right there um, out um, outdoors. So all this to say, we need some volunteers and we are going to need, um, we want you to participate. So I'll say this first. It's the most important thing you can do as a Public Art and Cultural Commission member is participate as a resident, business owner, artist, artist administrator in these activities. So we want to prioritize that first. But we're also asking a few of you to consider volunteering at some of these events. We need, um, you know, some a few people to float to be able to just welcome people in at the door, explain what's happening at these focus group, group sessions, um, help with sign in, and then um, potentially on Saturday, we're looking for a few people who wouldn't mind. Um, oh, I'm, I, was, I thought Allie left and I was like, Allie, I'm looking at you who wouldn't mind potentially acting as a tour guide. So I am uh, I, I would say that I'm going to send out an email, but I'm not. I'm going to challenge you because all of us have ooh, Allie has left the meeting. Um, I. I know that all of you get 300 emails a day in your inbox. And so what I'm challenging you, you to do, and, and um, I'll follow up with you in a, in a different way, is please take a look at this calendar tonight. Take a look at this calendar as soon as you can and say, you know, what is a priority for me? How can I best participate? What sessions might I be able to go to and participate in? And or am I able to volunteer at one of these sessions? And then just send me a note, send me or Carly a note. And we would really appreciate that. And, you know, we may, um, like some of the things we might be looking for is some people who can interpret some of the public art out in the square. So that's give you an idea of what one of that, you know, some of the tour guide activities, but also we'll have a script. So, and I'd ask, I think Carly and Dina are both on here, but if anybody, if you want to fill in any gaps for, for, on all of that. I think you covered it pretty well. There's a lot going on. It's going to be a really busy, crazy. exciting <laughs> stretch of days. So yeah, any help you all can provide, um, the more bodies there, the better, really. And I think they're, as far as art in the heart artwork, uh, Larry King's piece will still be up during this time. And then we're actually hoping to use the base of the podium because homesick will have come down or have been deinstalled uh, when these events are happening. So we're hoping to use the podium as part of the engagement. So whether that's like writing big questions on the side and letting people scribble answers um, on the podium, because it's all painted in chalkboard paint right now, or having, you know, different signage or images or things up for people to kind of to look at and engage with that'll be another component of this or yeah people could write on ribbons like if someone really is excited about this idea and wants to help us run with it um we could use some volunteers on that front as well Some yeah. Interactive. That's, yeah we have an interactive activity that will need someone to stand there and help explain to the public what we're asking them to do and there's free parking. If you, if Steph hadn't mentioned it, maybe. She oh yeah, have. that's a good one. Uh, there's free parking on the Saturday at the Marjorie Street lot of the cities. That is always open and free. And then there's free parking on the other days. If you come to the actual event, you'll have your ticket validated. So if you go to the Civic Center garage on Thursday, or if you go to the College Street garage on Friday. And in the press release, we also do tell people how to get here by transit and where the bicycle parking is. We have very limited space on this. <laughs> so um, I do have a question now for everybody. If you if you don't mind, 
So um, put your planner hats on, put your, you know, I'm going to have a community meeting hat on. I would like to know if you could find out the answer to one question about Pack Square. What would that question be? From people, from the public. What would you want to know? I won't limit you to one, so don't feel like you have to figure out which one is your most favorite question. My first thought was something more in an emotional place, like how do you want to feel in the area? Mm. I think sometimes getting too drilled in, you get very divisive answers. Well, we want this physical thing, that physical thing. If we know the feeling is this, then it's sort of easier for an artist to create that. So I don't know. It's what came up. That's great. I think mine would be what what can we do to to use this project to be able to move forward and bring the community together in a way that's progressive and fits everybody and not fight against the past but really aim at where where can we go with this great Sometimes asking people what they don't want to see can be valuable too. Mm. Just over to my phone, but um, just what would what would bring you here? What kinds of things would you love to come and gather here for? I was thinking about um, maybe if they had ideas of things they saw in other communities, other cities or locations that they were felt inspired by in the public space realm. Mm -hmm. I feel like I almost have a piggyback question that goes with Allie is like, what would bring people there? What do they need to be able to get there too? Right. We know there's always sometimes like the parking, all these other little things. So it's maybe not as always about the design too. So what question is like, what, you know, when you're going through that area, you're often, a lot of the traffic is North to South. Um, so I, my question would be like, what other places can you go to while passing by the Vance Monument or the Van or that Pack Square? You know what? Sorry, ancient language. Um, uh, uh, you know what other? Uh, how can it be on the way to other places? So not just as a destination, but how can it be on the way to other places in downtown? Yeah, I'll just note that we just came out of a meeting with the block community. And so, as you know, one of the five questions that we have for this project is how can we connect both mentally and physically to the block? And so, Andrew, your question is really relevant to that, that piece of, of our work. All right. Any other thoughts or comments about this? I'll hope you all join me at these events. It sounds like it's going to be really um, interesting to see. And finally, this is what people have been asking for a good while is how to engage. So hopefully they do. <laughs> um, the next piece is to talk about our December 15th retreat. Uh, Steph, do I hand this back over to you? Let's share this, um, okay. and and with I'll ask Carly to jump into if she's got any other thoughts on some of this. But I'd say um, we do have um, uh, a date that's tentative right now, and it's oh my gosh, just I've got this glare in my face. Um, remind me of the date. I'm so sorry. It's, it's December fifteenth, so it's our normal meeting yes. day. It would be our normal meeting day for December, but we are moving it up 
to 10 to 1 um, that day. So we normally, when we have a retreat, set aside a like three hour chunk of time. And this is our chance to prepare for our annual reports and set our goals for the next year. Yep. So you'll be, um, well, we, if everybody, what I want is to make sure that we can get more than a quorum at this uh, meeting. I know there's some people like Pat, our newest member who already had an out of town engagement that day. Um, everyone that was at our October meeting could make that date and time. So if you cannot make that date and time, can you please email me or Carly as soon as possible? And let us know because we will change it. And because the first thing that we have on the schedule at 10 a.m. is a meet and greet with a group of UNC Chapel Hill students who are here on a week long service learning trip about public art. So they're meeting with maybe 10 groups uh, within the community and they are doing us. They're doing a volunteer. I'm not sure what their service project is yet, but they were working on that. They're doing a volunteer effort in the community around public art and they're capping it right before they go back to Chapel Hill by having you all serve basically as a panel. And so um, we are going to ask them to send us maybe five uh, questions in advance and we'll be sharing those with you and then it's so that beginning of the meeting from 10 to at least 10 45 probably maybe even 11 we will allow that to be a really organic discussion not just back and forth between you and the um, um, the folks that are visiting but also between each other Right. So also between each other about the way you feel you know, about the the answers to these certain questions. And so that's that's a start. And then Katie mentioned that we do need to do some end of year work. And that looks like goal setting, having conversation about your accomplishments this year, having conversations about um, membership issues that might come up next year. Um, you know, who's coming off. We've already talked about that briefly, but just as a reminder, a little bit of, uh, I would say high, like we're uh, high level reorientation about the purpose of the Public Art and Cultural Commission right before we go into that goal setting and then looking at the um, annual report. So we'll have lunch. And the, the last thing that's really important that we're going to do is we are going to look at a list of potential projects for fiscal year 23-24. So staff is going to bring a report that basically tells you how much money we have um, and where that money is either already programmed for or where we are recommending that it potentially go to and getting your feedback on all of those areas of potential investment. And so we'll be able to, that the something you should be thinking about, I think in advance of coming to the meeting is really what the values are that drive decision-making with the projects that are chosen. Yeah. And I think, so that's, I mean, that sounds like not that much. That is gonna take up our, that is gonna take up three hours really quickly. So does anyone know right now, just so that they cannot make it besides Pat? Andrew, is that, yes, I can't make it or? No, okay. it's, I'm good. Yes, it's in the calendar. Yes. All right. Yeah, and I can be there too. All right, Joanna. Yay! Great. You said the magic word, lunch. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be fed. There's going to be caffeine um, all day long. And uh, we really appreciate your efforts on this. It's going to help us and um, move, move through, you know, the next fiscal year. So I also will be there. I yeah. it off. Thanks, yeah, Allie. Same here. Great. Great. We're really looking forward to it. Um, so this is um, uh, this just again. So this is a special meeting. It is in person. Um, I we're going to have a conversation about um, you know this this room is not set up to record or stream or anything like that. But we're going to do our best to potentially just stick a laptop up 
and record some of it just for uh, being able to share that with the public on our website afterwards for transparency's sake. Okay. Um, we'll also talk about you know our requests in this year's budget cycle and um, the fact that we really still need to update our ordinance. <laughs> it's very outdated. So these are things that we need to tackle. If there are goals that you um, would like to share with us ahead of that, uh, ahead of this meeting as we are planning um, that you think should be added to the agenda, please do that. Uh, email me, Andrew, Steph, or Carly, um, and we will um, try to work that into the agenda. But yes, this is going to be a very full agenda, and hopefully we get some really good work done we have in the past on, at these retreats. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, that is our business for today. Um, so that's wonderful. We moved right on through it. Um, do we have any public comment? I'm not sure who I'm asking. <laughs> right. I think Carly's just checking and okay. <laughs> yeah, give me just a second to check. Okay. I think so. No, not at this time. Thanks, Carly. So um, unless there are, is there anything else that you want to share? I will go ahead to move to adjourn the meeting. You're looking okay. for a second. <laughs> second. Adjourned. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have an awesome week. And I hope you can call me and let me know if you are going to come to some of these events. Will do. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Will do. Bye.